All right, so today what we're gonna be talking about is combinations of functions, mostly how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And then we'll also be throwing in something called um, a composition of functions. And so this will be posted on your PowerSchool, this little photo here. But ultimately what we're saying is when we have two functions, one's named f one's named g right if we want to add them together we're going to take the function f plus the function g of x for the difference we're going to subtract them multiply them and i'm going to show you how each of these works so you're not just looking at this little form but um the one thing notice here when we get down to the quotient we have f over g of x right which says that we're going to have the function f of x divided by the function g of x. Notice that g of x can't be zero because we can't divide by zero. Um, that's really the only reason for that. This will be posted in PowerSchool. You can write it in your notes if you pause it now. Um, but I'm just going to move on and start showing you how these things work. Okay, so let's get back down here to a normal size. Um, so we're going to start with the sum of functions. And when we're talking about the sum of functions, that is usually addition, right? Anytime you hear sum, we're talking about adding, right? So if I am given two functions, so given... Um, f of x equals 2x plus 1 and a g of x that equals, say, x squared plus 2x minus 1. We want to find f plus g of x and then you're going to be asked to then evaluate notice every time we say evaluate we usually give you an x equals type of thing um, the functions evaluate when x equals three what does that mean? It means after we find the equation of these two together, we're gonna to plug in three and get an actual number for everything, right? So what we're saying is f plus g of x. Well, if you remember it, and you probably don't, that would mean that we're gonna take f of x plus g of x. And what that looks like for us is, let's go blue. Well, f of x is just 2x plus 1, right? Plus g of x. Well, g of x is just x squared plus 2x minus 1. And we can just add these together, right? Because we're adding, all we're going to do is combine like terms. Everything can come right out of the parentheses when we're adding. Plus 1, plus x squared, plus 2x, minus 1. And the reason we can pull everything out of the parentheses when we're adding is this plus between them doesn't change the signs of anything. And so we can just go ahead and add everything. And we're going to start with our like terms. Um, let's go back to green so we say we only have one squared term and that is x squared so it's just going to stay the same it's not going to add or subtract to anything then we have 2x plus 2x those are our only two x terms so I can just add those together and get 4x bam bam cross them out then I have 1 minus 1 and so those just zero out so this would be our solution to f, f plus g of x. 
right? But what it also asks us is what happens when we evaluate at x equals three? When we're evaluating at something, we are just plugging in a number for that variable. So we're saying x equals three. So we're gonna take this, our outcome, and we are gonna go three squared plus four times three equals, right? Three squared equals nine plus four times three. Well, that's 12. And we're gonna get a solution which is 17. So when we're evaluating with a variable like that, we are gonna get a numerical solution. Um, I'm gonna have you guys try one now in the Ed puzzle. And um, I'm going to, now that you guys have done that problem, we are gonna talk about the difference of functions. Now, so when I have a difference of functions, before we were talking about addition, difference of functions talks about subtraction. A difference is subtraction, right? Addition is some, can't spell today, difference is subtraction. So we're talking about if we have f minus g of x, that is gonna equal f of x minus g of x, right? Which means that I just get to subtract the fraction. So if I am given a function f of x, equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 1, look familiar. We're going to find f minus g of x. And then after we do that, we are going to evaluate when x equals 2. So we're going to work this similarly to the last one, right? But now we have a subtraction problem. So here, I know that the formula here is f minus g of x equals f of x minus g of x. So I can just go, okay, well, f of x is 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. Minus g of x. Well, g of x is x squared plus 2x minus one. Notice I keep them in parentheses. And the reason I keep them in parentheses is I can't just subtract x squared. I have to distribute this minus to each part. So when I pull it out of the parentheses, I'm changing the sign of each one. So we're going to look at this. 2x plus 1, there's nothing happening to the outside of this that I have to do. So this can just come out of the parentheses and I can get 2x plus 1. But this needs to distribute through each part. So this becomes like multiplying each piece times negative 1 and it's going to change the sign. This becomes minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Right, negative times a negative is a positive. Now that we're pulled out of the parentheses and everything's been distributed through, we're just gonna combine our like terms again. Again, we have only one square value, so we're gonna go negative x squared, it's not gonna change. Now I have 2x minus 2x, so that's gonna disappear my values. 2x minus 2x is just zero. 
So those are done with, right? We're done with that. We're done with that. We're done with that. Now we just have one plus one, which is plus two. All right. This is our solution, right? This is our F minus G of X. But what we're asked to do also is evaluate when X equals two. And so when X equals two means that wherever we have an X in this solution, we are just going to plug in two. So we have minus X. Well, that's minus two squared plus two. I always put in parentheses what it is that I'm inputting to remind myself that 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 is the part that's getting squared, right? This minus isn't getting squared. It's just the X that's getting squared, right? And so when I go to solve this, I'm going to have two squared. Well, that's four. So I have minus four plus two equals negative two. And you're going to have problems like this in your Ed puzzle. So keep an eye on that. I'm going to give you guys one to try right now. So now that you are back from that, we're going to talk about the product. We've talked about the sum, which is addition, and we've talked about the difference, which is subtraction. Now we're going to talk about the product, which is multiplication. So the product of functions. is multiplication and we're saying that f times g of x equals f of x right times g of x right what that looks like in an example would be Given f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x minus 3, we want you to find f times g of x. And then we will evaluate when x equals 4. So once I get to the end, I have to plug in 4 for all of my x's. Right? So what does that look like? Well, we know that we're looking for f g of x and that that equals f of x times g of x right so i'm just going to multiply these i'm going to go okay well my f of x is just x squared right and i'm going to multiply that times my g of x well my g of x is x minus three so this is becoming a distribution problem right it's a do another color here. So I have to take this x squared and I have to multiply it times x. Well, that just gives me x cubed. Then I have to take this x squared and multiply it times negative 3, which gives me negative 3x squared. Right? That's all there is to solving the multiplication part of this problem, right? What I have to figure out now, though, is evaluate when x equals 4. So when x equals 4, what's going to happen? I'm going to just plug 4 into this function right here. So when f of x, so I would have my f of g of 4, right? That means we're inputting 4 for our variable. 
equals 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared. And we can just go ahead and solve that. And that's going to give me, oh my gosh, 4 times 4 times 4 is, I believe, 64. But let me make sure. I got a calculator right here. That's why I should probably do these problems before I start. But I was right. I could have just used my own brain power. So here you have 64 minus 3 times 4 squared is minus 3 times 16. So you get 64 minus 48, which is, heck if I know, 16. And so that would be your evaluated function. So that gives us multiplication. We still have to do division, and then I'm going to end it there, and I think I'm going to make a separate ed puzzle for later in the week on combination of functions um, because this is running a little bit longer than I would have wanted it to. So I'm going to give you an ed puzzle problem to do here on um, multiplication of functions, and you go ahead and do that. All right, now that you've done the multiplication of functions, I'm going to talk about quotient. Quotient, finding the quotient of two functions. I wanted to write fictions. Functions is a division problem, right? Quotient deals with division, which means that we will be dividing things here. Um, in terms of division, what you're trying, what you're looking for now is you're talking about f divided by g of x, right? We want to find the division, and when we break that down, that's like saying, "Don't you know class is over?" I was doing an ed puzzle. Oh, I'm pause. Okay, sorry, I got to go back to where I was. Miss uh, Snow just came into talk to me and I paused you guys. So when we're talking about quotient of functions, we're talking about division. And so we're saying f divided by g of x, right? And so that would be f of x over g of x. And like we talked about before, notice that g of x in this case cannot be equal to zero right? Because we can't have a denominator that's zero. We can't divide by zero. So when we do an example of this problem, so say I'm given I'm given I'm asked to find um, f over g of x and g over f of x for the functions um, f of x equals the square root of x and g of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. And you might think, hey, this is crazy and complement complicated, right? Um, but it's really not that complicated, right? If I want f of g of x, that is simply the square root of x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. It is literally that simple, 
right? Now this is a perfect square thing. We could probably break that down. Um, I can't remember if it was broken down in the book or not. Um, but I'm not gonna get the square root of X out of it. So I'm not gonna even really bother with breaking it down. Um, what happens when I'm looking for G over F of X? Well, it's just as you might think. It's that easy. 4 minus X squared over the square root of X. Now, technically, when we're dealing with stuff like this, we are supposed to... Um, rationalize the denominator. We're not really supposed to have a denominator in the fraction, but for the sake of this, we are okay. One thing I need to talk about though, before I let you guys go, I was going to get into composition of functions, but because this has gotten so long, I'm going to save the composition of functions, is we need to know what is the domain of each of these functions, right? And that means what can and can't X be. And ultimately what we're talking about with these is what makes the denominator zero, right? So we can't have zero in the denominator. And so we wanna know what's gonna make the denominator zero. In this case, right, the square root of zero is zero. So we're looking at, um, 4 minus x squared equals 0, and wherever that x squared would be 0 are things we can't have in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract 4, and I'm going to get minus x squared equals negative 4, which means that x squared just equals 4, right? So we cannot have right? So in this case, x can't equal plus or minus 2, right? When I take the square root of both of those sides, x can be plus or minus 2. So for this function right here, we can't have x equals plus or minus 2, but x can be any other number. So I could write this as negative infinity to negative two parentheses because that doesn't include it to negative two up to two which we also can't include right and then we could have another union with two all the way to infinity or we could just write all real numbers except plus or minus two, right? We write that any way we can think of to come up with it, right? But the idea is to know that the domain has to tell me when the denominator would be zero, it can't be included in the domain. If we're looking at the domain of this function here, little bit simpler, right? Because we just have to say X can't equal zero, right? So we've got all real numbers in this case, right? We can go negative infinity all the way to zero in union with zero, but not including zero, all the way to positive infinity, right? Or we could just say all real numbers except for zero. Um, so I'm going to let it go here. I will give you a few problems in the Ed puzzle, um, maybe related to this one. I might just skip this one. Um, I will do a, another uh, Ed puzzle on composition of functions and possibly inverse functions, but I might save inverse functions for another lesson since they're separated in the book. And um, that means you won't have a um, web assign assignment until after I finish composition of functions, which means you only have one assignment this weekend in web assign. So try and get this done and, um, let me know if you have any questions.